All right, so welcome to uh, Crucial Python week four. Um, this week we're going to be talking about um, broadcasting, which is something we can do in uh, NumPy as a way of uh, simulating larger arrays, which would involve repeating lots of elements, and it sort of it'll allow you to calculate things like that without having to actually replicate the values in your in your arrays. So here's our uh -oh, logo. So um, set up our imports first, and then to, to motivate this example, I'm going to use something that we do a lot in signal processing, which is um, these short time analyses. So last week. Uh, we saw how you can take a long vector and you can uh, break it up into lots of overlapping pieces by using the stride tricks. I'm going to be doing that again today. I'm going to start off with this uh, waveform like this. This is a, basically a sinusoid, but it's sort of, you know, it's a little bit undersampled, so you see it's a little bit irregular in the sinusoid. We're going to try and uh, use, we want to analyze the frequency content of that. And so we're going to break that sinusoid into a bunch of short frames using the stride tricks. Um, set up. So this is basically, this is now little sections of 16 samples from this waveform up here, but then every, every successive row is offset by four points compared to the previous one. So 16, 16 point samples hopped by four points. And then uh, the reason we would do this is that we can then, in using F the FFT, we can just take that matrix, calculate the FFT of every row, and have a uh, look at that plot, and this is basically a spectrogram turned on its side. We have su successive time indices going down, and then each row is the successive frequency, the, the frequency bands, and saying there's some energy here around this frequency um, at, at different times. Now, this, this is all very nice. What we notice about this is there's kind of this varying pattern. The original sinusoid, right, was just a simple sinusoid with no time variation. But when we do this analysis, we see these artifacts, and what the artifacts are coming from the fact that the, the actual time frame here isn't quite perfectly aligned every time. It varies depending on exactly what the phase of the sinusoid was compared to where we were taking our frame. So the way to um, deal with that in DSP is that we put a tapered window over every frame. We make the edges go to zero, and um, if we use a window like this, a raised cosine window, then sort of the energy in the middle will be analyzed, the energy at the edges will sort of taper away nicely and we'll avoid these edge effects. So the trick is to take this window and multiply it by every row of our, step, of our hopped, uh, chopped up vector here. So how are we going to do that? And that's where we're going to, broadcasting is going to help us out. Now there are several ways we could do this. The sort of the classic uh, linear algebra way would be to take a, uh, make a square matrix which has these elements as the diagonal, and then just do a matrix multiply such that you know, it applies to every, every column, or sorry, every row. So if we, we can do that, we can make that square matrix with diag here. So if we execute this and just plot it as an image like this, this is the, our window on the diagonal of this matrix. And then we can apply that to every row of our um, framed matrix by using NP dot, by using matrix multiply. Um, so we have a rows by columns times a square matrix. We end up sca scaling every row. Sorry, yeah, scaling the, the columns. So now you see this is what we're trying to get to. Here we've got these rows, but we taper away to zero at the edges, and that's that's what we're trying to get. That's what that's the effect we're trying to have. But clearly, this was not the most uh, computationally efficient way to do it. We in involved matrix multiplies with a matrix with a lot of zeros in it. It seems like we can do better than that. Now. Uh, if you've done this in MATLAB, then you know the MATLAB solution is to come up with a, a matrix that's the same size as the thing you want to scale with the values that you want to scale each point by basically being repeated. And then once you've got something like this, this is now the same size as the original rows of data that I want to modify. And so I can just do a direct multiplication here, multiplication of two arrays in NumPy will just do me, give me a pointwise multiplication, which is what I want. So that's, that's sort of, you know, that is a computationally sensible way of doing it. But it involved this, this tiling, this replication, replicating of, the, of my little vector, of my window vector, by once for every frame. And that seems like, you know, maybe there's a way around that. And of course, that's what broadcasting will do for us. So in fact, instead of 
sort of multiplying out this uh, window to make this large matrix, I can just take the window vector itself and multiply it, by, multiply it directly by my original matrix and magically um, I get the right result. I get this nicely tapered thing that I wanted. And what happened here is that when NumPy saw these two different sized arrays, it was able to figure out, aha, if I replicated this one by once for every row, then it, they would work together and, it would, and I could actually complete the c calculation. So we've got three ways of doing this. Of course, they, are, they look different, but they also have different um, computational requirements. So we can actually compare them using the built-in time-it magic in IPython. It's going to take a little bit of time to run, but here's doing the dot product of the square matrix, doing the, uh, the tiling to generate the big matrix, and then point-wise multiplication, or doing the multiplication with the implicit broadcasting out. And so it turns out that the tiling is pretty slow because of all the memory it has to allocate. It has to use up twice as much memory. The matrix multiplication is faster, but it's still you know, not ideal. And then the broadcasting ends up being very quick because it's just this one operation. There's no extra stuff we have to do in here. So how does broadcasting do this? Well, it turns out that it's, um, it, it, there's a specific set of rules about it, how it looks at the dimensions and tries to match them up. It looks at, basically looks at the, the last dimension, which in C ordering is the most rapidly varying dimension. And it tries to see if the two, matri the two arrays will match in that dimension. If so, they just point must multiplied. Or if one of the dimensions is unity, it's a single dimension of one, then it'll scale it up to be the same as the other thing. So for instance, if, if, our, if our array had been transposed, there had been a set of columns rather than a set of rows, then this wouldn't have worked. And what it says here is that it could not broadcast together the 16 by 29 transposed array here and the 16 element um, window because it looks at the last dimension here, which is 29, compared to the last dimension here, which is 16, and they're different. They, they, neither of them is one, and they're not the same, so it doesn't work. We can make it work just by taking, taking our window and turning it into a matrix which is 16 by 1 rather than just being 16. And we can do that very efficiently using this uh, nice slicing syntax where we say, I want you to take the window, take all the points, but then also put a second dimension in here, which is a new, a new dimension. New axis will do that for us. And so if I run that, then um, this works nicely to give me my tapering by columns rather than by rows. So just to look at that a little bit more in detail, here are two more matrices. One is a three-dimensional array with uh, sizes three, four, five, and then two-dimensional array with sizes three and five. If we multiply them together, it's sort of, if you just look at the dimensions, it's like, well, the only way that would make sense is if you multiply, if you replicate this one to have an extra dimension, use it four times in the middle. But, you know, uh, if they, if you, can, you, could, you could logically do that by looking at it here, but if, you know, the dimensions had to be the same size, it wouldn't be safe. So here, broadcasting says, look, you've got 3, 4, 5, and 3, 5. I don't know what to do with it. I can't apply my rule of looking for unit dimensions. So again, we can do that just by taking B, either manually, explicitly reshaping it to have a one dimension in the middle, which, of course, doesn't change the number of uh, dimensions or number of points. Um, or we can use, again, our slicing trick to add a new axis in the middle. And uh, that works well, and this gives the same result. And so to get the full details on these uh, broadcasting rules, you can look at the, the SciPy documentation, which describes it very clearly. So just to finish off, um, remember that I, I motivated this by saying we wanted to get this tapering of the edges because um, it's going to improve our, it's going to remove some of these artifacts for the frequency analysis. So here I'm going to plot the comparison of the, the, fr the row-wise FFT that we had to begin with of the frame data and then the same thing, but applied to the frame data now with the window applied to every row. And if we compare those, you can see the difference. That here's these, this, this red stripe is the, is the energy, but we've got, depending on exactly which frame it is, the, we've got these artifacts that come up. Here, when we do this tapering, we get this very consistent, every row looks more or less the same. And that's what we were looking for and trying to use in the first place. All right, thanks. Thank you.